Decentralized autonomous organizations in some form have been around for since the advent of humanity, but became possible on scale and convenience unseen before thanks to the blockchain technology. DAOs often have more transparent governance, which makes them more efficient than traditional organizations. In this video, we will talk about DAOs' hits and misses, the way they function, legal aspects of launching and operating DAOs. My friends, Welcome to Stobox Insights, a video series about capital raising and financial innovations, brought to you by a professional consulting company. Visit our website stobox.io to learn more about our products and services and how they can benefit your business. Let's go! Decentralized autonomous organizations are organizations whose governance format is determined on the level of smart contract. Usually, decisions in DAO are made by voting. The subject and the format of voting can vary. For example, making one decision will require the consent of a simple majority, whereas others can demand the overwhelming majority consent. It can also be the simple majority of members participating in a given call, the liquid democracy system and many other variations. Voting power in DAOs is allocated via the so-called governance coin. The more tokens a member possesses, the more voting rights she has. DAO can also set the rules concerning what may be put to the vote and the procedures for this. Some of the things that DAO can vote for include making amendments to the DAO smart contract or deploying the organization's financial resources stored on the smart contract. Some results of the voting are enacted automatically on the level of blockchain, such as transfer of funds, but voting can concern any matter of organization's lives. All in all, there is an infinite number of formats for DAO operations and governance depending on its goals. DAOs can represent an organization of any type. It can be a large corporation or a small non-profit. It can even be a school's parent committee or inhabitants of the same multiple apartment building collaborating on the day-to-day -day issues. The most recent popular example of DAO was the Constitution DAO, a group of people who chipped in to buy one of the USA's Constitution first versions. The goal they had in mind was to demonstrate that the items of historical heritage may not only belong to the elites, but also be in hands of the nation. To sum up, the agenda USA's constitution, for example, of the DAO use case. The next practical aspect is the discussion of how profits inside the organization are distributed, which is relevant for the for-profit DAOs. The most basic approach is that profits are accumulated in the smart contract and periodically divided on a pro-rata basis among the holders of the government tokens, similarly to how dividends work. Another possible option is doing buybacks of governance token. This raises the price of the governance token by reducing its supply, therefore being an indirect way to distribute dividends. This may be beneficial if capital gains taxes are lower than income taxes on dividends. An interesting variation of the buyback option can be implemented if the governance token also serves as the utility token of the DAO. If DAO collects fees only in this token, the profits will be accumulated in its native token. Therefore, it can burn the token instead of distributing it. This is similar to the buyback option as it also reduces the circulating supply. Notice interestingly that while two previous options are similar to the ones implemented by traditional organizations, the third one is unique to DAOs. It's beneficial in comparison to traditional buybacks because tokens are taken out of circulation immediately when the DAO receives any revenue. This is equivalent to distributed corporate revenue as dividends immediately after each small portion of revenue has been received, which is just crazy if you think about it. If you find this video useful or at least entertaining, please like it to give it higher exposure in YouTube. Also, if you have people who can benefit from watching this video, please share it with them. First legal aspect to consider is DAO's legal personality. Usually DAOs don't have legal entities at all. Still, regulations in various countries are starting to move in the direction of giving DAOs a chance to be a legal person. 
For example, in Wyoming, DAOs can now be recognized as a special type of LLC. At the moment of recording this video, we are not aware about such options in other countries. DAO could benefit from having a legal entity so that it will be able to sign contracts with counterparties. Even though in crypto industry, many interactions work purely on the basis of trust and smart contracts, a more broad adoption of DAOs requires engaging in more standard legal relationship. Standard organization set up as DAO still has to deal with lease contracts, open bank accounts, pay salaries, and so on. And this is where legal personality comes in handy. A drawback of having a legal entity is that it creates additional challenges and expenses on its administration, reporting, setup, and so on. This is why early-stage DAOs may not benefit from launching a legal body. The second essential aspect is regulation of the governance token. There are two things to consider. In some countries, all issuers of crypto coins must register. For instance, in the US, all the issuers controlling the issuance and burn of crypto assets are considered money service businesses. Accordingly, they have to register under the Bank Secrecy Act in each state separately except for the few ones that don't require such registration. For this reason, many ICOs and exchanges don't work with the US residents at all. The second aspect is the securities legislation. Sometimes the governance token can be recognized as security, which also often provides voting rights and profit distributions to their investors. The crucial metric distinguishing a DAO token and a security token is whether the token in question offers a right to obtain profit and the way in which it is distributed. There is also a factor of whether the token is promoted as an investment with an expectation of generating return. Different countries have different regulations and criteria for determining whether the token is security. For example, the Hubi test in the US is stricter compared to many other jurisdictions. Being classified as a financial instrument doesn't automatically render the governance token obsolete, but creates limitations on its promotion and registration requirements. The violation of these requirements may result in harsh consequences. To secure yourself, it's better to get advice from lawyers or consultants specializing in the field. If you would like to learn more about the legal aspects of STOs, check out the panel discussion we held previous year in our conference. Decentralized autonomous organization possesses three benefits over traditional ones. First of all, they are characterized by a better decision-making process. During the decentralized decision-making, more people contribute their expertise and perspective which results in a broader picture taken into account compared to centralized decision-making. Secondly, DAOs can expect more active member participation in the organization's life. People enjoy participating in activities where they feel a sense of belonging and their ideas are heard. Given that in DAOs their input is more likely to make a difference, members are more likely to be active contributors to the DAO's life. Thirdly, DAOs are more fair to members and stakeholders. It makes sense to have a say in an organization you invested in, if not money, then time and trust, instead of being dependent on the will of centralized management. Now, let's switch to the drawbacks. First of all, DAOs are vulnerable on the level of smart contract, which can be used for voting manipulation. This is why it's crucial to conduct a quality security audit. Secondly, some decisions can be implemented on the level of smart contract. For example, it's possible to block money withdrawal from the smart contract by voting, but not from the bank account. This also refers to a myriad of day-to-day -day operations and decisions. Unfortunately, it leaves space for some measure of abuse. This is why DAOs should create a system of checks and balances, as well as a sufficiently sophisticated governance system. Lastly, DAOs are vulnerable to the decline in member participation. Their strong side is devotion and contribution of members, but if they burn out, their organization weakens as well. Respectively, DAOs should constantly work on rejuvenating and re-energizing the members' base, building the community, attracting new members, and engaging existing ones. A great material to read on this regard is the so-called Community Canvas, which I encourage you to Google and check. In conclusion, decentralized autonomous organizations 
are innovative and beautiful ways to create an organization where each member will feel a sense of belonging. And such organizations suit well for many types of fundraising. If you are interested in launching DAO or other type of crypto-related activity, Stobox team will be happy to provide you with a 30-minute consultation which you can book at info at stobox.io or by filling in the form on our website stobox.io. Stay tuned and see you in the next episode.